Dmitry Urbanovich took the poker world by storm, I think a little bit before Feder Holtz did even, yeah. back in 2015, 2016, when he became a super champion of the super high rollers when he was 18 years old. He was this. He was basically the next to net Oberstadt at that time, right? Mm. And this hand that we're going to show you is from 2016, where he's still on his roll here, and he's against an amateur, and he feels pretty confident. We can tell from some of his plays. Yeah, it's the 2016 Dublin EPT main event, and there's still a 200,000 euro difference between first and second. And we can tell you, we are certain these guys did not make a deal. Yeah, we don't think Dimitri would have done that in this <laughs> okay. case. Uh, this hand was suggested by Brian with a Y. Good job, Brian. Of course, as always, if you want to suggest a hand for the breakdown, use Twitter, include a YouTube link, and a timestamp. Now before we get to the hand, we have to thank our sponsors who make this video possible. That's Nitrogen Sports Poker, where at the end of every month, we play and you're invited to join us at a crazy tournament, which is very inexpensive and there's a huge overlay. If you want to play that tournament though, you have to use the link in the description of this video when you sign up or you can't even see it on Nitrogen and that would be a travesty for you and probably your whole family. Yeah. And you don't want that. You don't want the shame, no. the embarrassment, all of that. It's, it's quite something to have to live with. It's less than a dollar to play though. There's almost a thousand dollars in guarantees. We usually get like 60 or 70 people. You're getting like 14 to one of your money. Get in there and get you some poker. Use the link in the description. It's a good deal. Let's Let's get to the hand. Urbanovich lost heads up to Eric Seidel on a super high roller after having a massive chip lead. He did not take it well. I think mostly because he wasn't over the fact that Zane had left one direction. Lines are up to 60,000, 120,000 with a 20,000 ante. Gilles, the German qualifier, has ace 10. Oh, we raising. We raising it. We California raising it. I heard it through the grapevine. Got to breathe a bit first, though. Three hundred thousand. Ivanovich with four three of clubs calls. The flop is Jack five do so Ivanovich is up and down. Let's check the action to Bernius. Who checks behind? So Bernier's pairs is 10 on the turn. Urbanovich now has a flush draw to go with his straight draw. That was his only live pair he could hit. Urbanovich leads for 400,000. Trying to win this with a semi bluff. How's Bernier's going to respond with second pair top kicker? He raises to a million. Don't know that I would have raised there, but in this exact instance, he's picked a good spot to charge Dimitri to draw. Ivanovich calls the raise. We're going to see another card. We could sit here and talk about how this is a monster turn card for Urbanovich, and it's really interesting because Bernier's also hits a 10, but I think we need to talk about the big old elephant in the room, which is this raise. This is a very peculiar raise by Bernier's here against Urbanovich. Very, very strange. You don't expect uh, Urbanovich is ever going to fold a jack here no. in this spot. Now, there is some value to this raise in that Urbanovich is also probably not going to fold a 10, and maybe not even a 5 if he thinks Bernier's does some weird raises, which, as we can see, Bernier's does some weird raises, right? Yeah. So there's value there at least, and also all the draws are going to have to call. But you sure got to hope they don't re-raise because then you may have to dump this good hand. It really makes perfect sense and fits into our yeah. calling range kind of ideally. I mean, it might work out pretty well against the draws because Urbanovich likely and is correct to think that he has a huge edge over this guy. Bernier's yeah. is a DJ and is visibly nervous, and Urbanovich is a prodigy of poker, you know? So, yeah. like, he, he's probably not going to go for the super high variance plays with draws against this guy when they're super deep. So this might work kind of perfectly against draws in that he gets to charge them. However, at the same point, you can get another bet out of draws on the river sometimes. I guess maybe he, does, he wants to avoid the, I don't know if he has diamonds or clubs thing. Like, you don't know which one you want to avoid type of thing. Maybe that's part of it. I mean, you're still going to have, you raise enough that, you don't raise enough that they're going to fold anyway. You're going to have the same problem on the river anyway right, right. now. And you're going to get two streets of value most of the time because Urbanovich is the kind of guy who's usually going to double barrel, not just single barrel when he bluffs. Especially with this hand. We almost certainly he's going to double barrel. Yeah, he has four high. He's got four high. It's, it fits into his, his barreling range for sure. So... This, this plays really well, I think, as a two-street call call rather than a raise here, because we're almost, I gotta believe we're checking back the river, yeah. aren't we? But at least there's some merit to the yes. raise, right? Now, should Urbanovich consider three-betting here? That's an interesting question. If we know this guy's capable of all sorts of weird and wacky stuff, he probably should consider it. However, 
This kid could really have Jack, Jack, Jack pretty easily. And we have a great hand to call. We're getting a great price. If we hit the straight, it's completely disguised. If we hit the clubs, not so much. No. Arbanovich probably thinks he's got a big enough edge on this kid, like you were just saying, that rather than play the super high variance game, we can just call. It's fine. We get there enough of the time. It's not a problem. The river is the five of hearts pairing the board. Such a brick, the third little pig could have built a house with it. Well, he semi-bluffed the turn. It's a pure bluff on the river. And quite a small bet, 425,000. You think Bernie Ace is gonna huff and puff and blow the house down? Seems like a pretty easy just call. All in. Wow, he shoves on Urbanovich. Dangerous shove, what if he had it? He didn't have it, and he folded. When we were doing the turn analysis, you might have been thinking, that was a weird raise on the turn. <laughs> well, now you realize that compared to this raise, it's nothing. This river raise is insanity. Not only the fact that he raises it all, but also the size. What is going on here in Bernie Ace's mind? Yeah, this is like the Beetlejuice of raises. You don't really know why it's there or if it really fits or what the heck is going on <laughs> at all. That's what I was going to say. I, I figured as much. Um, so Urbanovich, let's start with him. Yeah. This bet actually is pretty great and makes a lot of sense. He has a lot more fives than, than um, Bernier's does for sure. Bernier's yeah. has almost none unless he has full houses here, almost always. Um, and he's not really trying to fold out one pair of hands. He's just trying to fold out bigger draws because he has four high himself, Urbanovich does. So. Right, so if Bernier's has like the king queen of something. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so that makes a lot of that sense. Out. Yeah, it yeah. does make a lot of sense. Now, I don't think Urbanovich would do it with this sizing against a player that he deemed more competent than he probably thinks Bernier's is because mm -hmm. the price is so good. I mean, if Justin Bonmo's sitting there, he's just going to call with his ace highs and some of his king highs because he's like, well, in my distribution, it's good enough to call when Urbanovich bets this much. I'm getting eight to one. You know, but he thinks Bernier's is a guy he can bully with small bets, I guess. Yeah, also the pros may even see that as an opportunity to raise sometimes and blow Urbanovich off his one pair of hands. Yeah. Which clearly would work in this case, although they wouldn't need to do it. Okay, so that's Urbanovich. That makes sense, whatever. Let's get to the cool stuff, the crazy stuff. I, I don't know if I'm going to call it cool, but I'm going to call it unique and different. Because <laughs> okay. I don't know if I've seen, like, the sizing is absurd. Once Urbanovich bets, yes. it's about a three million chip pot, and Bernier's goes in for like six and a half million effective. That's, that's a bad that's idea. Urbanovich's effective stack. And the thing that's so weird about it is that it's not exactly a hand you should be bluffing with. I mean, he's just trying to get Urbanovich off of Jack, I guess. Would I mean, Urbanovich it, ever play a Jack like this anyway? It has to be that he's trying to fold out a Jack. He cannot believe he's going to get called by a worse hand. No, of course not. When he not. makes it this much in this spot after that tiny bet on the river. The problem is Urbanovich does have trip fives in his range. I'm not sure if he's calling them. Or maybe he's folding those two, but that can't be the plan to try and fold out trip fives. He's not folding trip not fives. Not a good thing to target, especially when your head's up, especially against a great player. I don't think he's folding trip fives, Jonathan. I, I don't know for sure, but you could say, well, what can I beat? But apparently there's things you can beat. I mean, this guy's just weird. He just plays weird, I guess. Yeah. And this may be a function. Like, we see the Bernier's is breathing heavily the entire time, and he's visibly what we think is nervous. So and clear, we're not actually. sure if that's true or not, but... This is kind of an indication that maybe he is. He's doing these things that just feel oh. like, I'm just going to go all in. I don't know. You know, like, I mean, it doesn't have to be nervousness, right? It could just be, I'm not sure what to do in this spot, and I'd rather be aggressive than not, right? It's so easy to call with this hand. It's this, such a good calling hand. I mean, it's, an, it's a perfect calling hand on both turn and river, really. He's going to win either way by going call, call, or apparently by going raise, call. He actually makes a little bit more money playing it the way he did, at least on the turn. Yeah. But once he raises the river, that's that feels like near game theory disaster, if not complete game theory disaster spot. I don't think about I, he probably is folding out a jack. I'm not sure if Urbanovich is even leading with the jack, though. Yeah, I don't know. I think Bernie is could consider raising for value if he had ace jack instead of ace 10, although not to this size. Mm -hmm. He could consider it, although it is very risky. Ace 10 is certainly not a value raise. I, no. I guess it's a bluff. I think it's just an, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I agree. And I don't really know why we'd ever raise one pair in this spot based on the fact that Urbanovich called the raise on the turn and is now donking the river when the board pairs. It just seems like really hard to get value with one pair no matter what we have. Maybe you can make this crazy above the rim play with aces that you check back on the yeah. flop. I don't even like that. No. Every time you get snapped, you're, you're dead. Um, you might be folding out the jacks anyway. I just feel like it's a pretty clear call. Yeah. Despite this relatively big pot, Urbanovich goes on to win this anyway, which is not a huge surprise. No, I mean, he is the man. This is an amateur. It makes sense. So we don't love how the DJ played this one. No. We kind of want to hang the DJ, if you will. Both what? the rays on the turn. It's a song. It's a song. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, in felt... a Black Mirror episode. It's okay. okay. It felt really kind of no, aggressive no, no. And, and very violent. <laughs> no, no, no. No implications <laughs> okay. that way at all. Uh, that's why I said, if you will. 
So uh, sure. we, did, we didn't really love the, the race on the turn. It's going to murder everyone, if you will. Yes. What? Race on the turn or the race on the river. What do you guys think? Do you see value in this that we don't see? Let us know in the comments about how you think both these guys play their hand. We're looking forward to seeing what you have to say. Now, we saw some strange plays out of Bernier's, but Urbanovic made some interesting plays as well, and he's done that throughout his poker career, and we did other hands with him before during his run that I mentioned in the beginning. This one's against Igor Kurganov, who is very difficult competition. It's called High Roller Nightmare. You should check it out. Definitely check it out. It's a really cool hand, yeah. and wow, some interesting decisions. Uh, if you want to know how we came to all of our decisions about this hand, what we really think about these raises, and like, hear all the granular thoughts, you got to check out our podcast, The Breakdown Presented by the Poker Guys. It's on your favorite podcast app, whatever that may be. Yeah, podcast app. Podcast app. And uh, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel.